So, ChatGPT Advanced Voice Mode just released for desktop, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use it and show you why it is amazing. Go to Data in the top menu, then select Data Validation. I'm not lying when I say this, this feature is gonna completely change the way that we interact with our computers. This new feature that they released is basically like having a human tutor with you 24 seven on your laptop walking you through step by step everything on your computer in real time. If you don't believe me, stay to the end of this video so you could see for yourself exactly how to use this. So first of all, we wanna make sure we have the latest version of ChatGPT downloaded to our desktop. So what you wanna do is just come over to ChatGPT, look up ChatGPT desktop, Click this here and then click download and make sure you download the latest version. If you already have it downloaded, sometimes you just gotta delete it and then re-download it. That's what I had to do to get access. And what we want to do now is let's come to our ChatGPT app. And if we click this button down here, this will activate the advanced voice mode feature. All right, so it's gonna show this little widget here. Let's put this over here. Hey, what's up? Hey, not much, just here to chat. What's up with you? Uh, not much. I'm having trouble with Google Sheets. I'm brand new to it and I need to make my Google Sheets look pretty good. So could you help me with that? And I want you to be really quick with your responses because I only have five minutes. Absolutely. Let's make this quick. To spruce up your Google Sheets, you can use conditional formatting, highlight cells based on rules, e.g. if a number is above a certain value. Add borders, select cells and use the border tool to create clear separation. Okay, thank you. Could you help me create borders? Sure, here's how to add borders. One, highlight the cells you wanna add borders to. Two, click on the borders icon in the toolbar. It looks like a square with four quadrants. Three, choose the border style you want. You can add borders to all sides or just to the top, bottom, left, or right. And there you go. Your cells should now have borders. Cool, that's great. So I have a couple columns. I have a date column, I have a price column, a total amount, and a category. So could you actually help me format it so whenever I type in a date, it always shows month, date, and year? Absolutely. To format the date column to always show as month, day, and year, follow these steps. Click on the letter at the top of your date column to highlight the whole column. Go to Format in the top menu, then hover over Number. In the sub menu, select custom date and time. From the options, choose a format that displays as month, day, and year, or create your own custom format. For example, December 31st, 2024. Now, whenever you type in a date, it'll format the way you want. Okay, that worked, thank you. Now, could you actually help me with the price? So whenever I type in a number for the price column, it automatically adds a dollar sign? Sure thing. To format the price column with a dollar sign, click on the letter at the top of your price column to highlight the whole column. Okay, could you do this, explain this quicker for, for me, please? Sure, here's the quick version. Highlight your price column, format, go to custom or control button style, Go to Format, Number, Currency. Now, any number you enter will show with a dollar sign. Thank you, that worked pretty well. Now, for the C column, I want the total amount to show for the whole entire price column. Could you do that so it adds these numbers together for me automatically? Of course. Here's how to sum up the entire price column. One, click on the cell where you want the total to appear in the total amount column. Type equals sum, and then click and drag to select all the cells in the price column. Close the parenthesis, period, and press enter. Now that cell will display the total of your price column. Thank you, that actually worked. Now on to category for the column D. I want to be able to have a drop down to select which category. So like for the, these expenses, I'd love to be able to like categorize it as like, you know, uh, groceries or rent or that sort of stuff so I could track expenses. Got it. Let's create a drop down for the category column. Highlight the cells in the category column where you want the drop downs. Go to data in the top menu, then select data validation. In the criteria section, choose list of items. Four, enter your categories separated by commas, like groceries, rent, utilities, etc. Five, save. 
Now, each cell in that column will have a dropdown with your categories. That actually worked, thank you. Hey, so I'm actually still in Google Sheets. It's looking pretty good now, but I want I want you to give me some cool ideas to make this spreadsheet look even cooler. Just give me some cool random use case. Great, here are a few cool use cases and features you can add to your Google Sheet. One, progress trackers. Add a column with check boxes to mark tasks as completed. Use conditional formatting to change the row color when a task is checked off. Expense tracker with pie chart. Visualize spending by creating a pie chart that shows the proportion of each expense category. Highlight your data and go to insert slash chart. Sure, could you, could you walk me through exactly how to do that? Absolutely. Let's create an expense tracker with a pie chart. First, set up your data. In one column, list your expense right, categories. Go, go much quicker. I want you to go like 2x speed and I already have the price of everything. I have categories listed out with conditional formatting, all that stuff. So could you help me now really quickly? Got it. Let's jump straight to creating the pie chart. One, highlight the cells containing your categories and the corresponding expense amounts. Two, go to insert in the top menu, then select chart. In the chart editor on the right, choose pie chart as the chart type. Wait, how do I do it? I have I have all of that stuff highlighted. What do I do from here? Oh, click Perfect. insert, I see. So what do I do when I click insert? Great, after clicking insert, follow these steps. One, click on chart. This will insert a default chart into your sheet. In the chart editor will appear on the right. Choose pie chart as the chart type. Your chart will update to a pie chart, displaying your expense categories and amounts. Adjust the chart style and colors in the chart editor for a look you like. And there you have it, a chart to visualize your expenses. Whoa, that's actually really cool. Could you give me another cool, like how do I change the color of all the rows? What if I wanna have like different colors per row? You can use conditional formatting to change row colors based on certain conditions or you can manually set alternating row colors. Here's how to manually set alternating colors. One, highlight the rows you want to format. Two, go to Format in the top menu. Three, click on Alternating Colors. A sidebar will appear. Choose a style or customize your own by selecting different colors for header, even, and odd rows. Five, click Done. Now your rows will have alternating colors making your sheet more visually appealing. Wait, explain that. So how do I do the alternating colors? Sure, let me break it down for you. Oh, never mind. Hi. That that worked. Thank you very much. That's great. Uh, now give me one other cool chart to use so I could chart my data even better. Actually, could you show that. could you show me how to make a pie chart? Certainly. To make a pie chart, highlight the cells containing your categories and corresponding values. Go to insert in the top menu, click on chart, four, in the chart editor that appears on the right, choose pie chart as the chart type. Five, your data will be displayed as a pie chart. You can customize the chart style and colors in the chart editor. Give it a try. Thank you very much, that's awesome. All right, so you guys could you guys could see here the capability of this. So I just shut down the advanced voice mode, but this is pretty damn cool because imagine using any software and instead of having to call customer service or look up on YouTube or just Google search how to use the platform, you could literally pull this up and walk have it walk it through step by step. So as of now, it does not have vision capabilities. We're not able to actually have ChatGPT visualize and understand and contextualize what's on the screen, but that is coming very, very shortly. If I had to guess, that is maybe in the ChatGPT 5 that should be coming out in a month or so. This is absolutely game-changing. We can, like, I could already think of 
10 different use cases for my own life, how this is gonna be extremely beneficial and save me so much time when interacting interacting with my computer, all because of ChatGPT advanced voice mode on the desktop. This is pretty cool. Let me know in the comments below, what are your guys' thoughts on this? How are you gonna use it? See you guys in the next video.